Go ahead, put your hands together again for our Lord and our Savior. God's got a blessing with your name on it. With your name on it. That should be good news for somebody. Somebody be waiting on that blessing. Somebody be praying about that blessing. It should be good news to know that God indeed, in fact, has a blessing. Not for your neighbor, not for your co worker, not, not for your spouse, either. but He's got a blessing with it. your name. Go ahead and put your hands together again and bless our Lord. I pray that we hear and endures, and I pray, Lord God, 
Let you just have your way, not just in this place, Lord God, but in all places, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that our seeking of you, Lord God, today will be greater than our seeking of you yesterday. So just have your way. Say and do whatever it is that you will to say and to do. We yield to you, Holy Spirit. Rest, rule, and abide in this place. And continue, Lord God, to be God. I'm reminded of our expectations that we had earlier, Lord God. Some of us are still waiting, Lord God, for you to exceed those things, Lord God. So I pray that you would exceed those expectations, Lord God, and allow us, Lord God, to be comforted. Allow us, Lord God, to be healed. Allow us, Lord God, to be delivered. Whatever it is that we stand in need of, Lord God. Pour out your spirit in this place, Lord God. And have your way. And we'll be careful to give you the honor and the glory and the praise that is due your name. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go ahead and give the Lord another hand for the praise that we take the seat. So I was talking to Tim earlier, and we were just talking about our week. And I was just telling him that God's just been hitting me with these one-liners, you know. And we're talking about how funny God is and how, how the truth can be funny sometimes. And so one of the things I was, I was sharing with Tim was that I, I was complaining to God about the fact that me and my wife don't share a lot of interests, right? Uh, I like to swim, she so don't like to swim. I like to work out, she so don't like to work out. I like to bike, she so don't like to bike. I can go on, I can go on, I read a book on but, uh, And I'm complaining to God about it. And God says, stop complaining about it and pray about it. So I prayed to God about it, and when I finished, God said, well, now I pray that you have the interest that she has. I'm, I'm sure that's what you, you want me to be able to go shop and all of that stuff that you think is cool. But, but, but. I want you to be doing my stuff. You want me to be doing your stuff. And so as I focus and complain to God about it, he's like, all right, I got your prayer. Stop complaining about it. But now you you got to share our interest too. And so it just made me laugh to think that God, God will hit me with that. Right? I'm, I'm praying in my heart, Lord, do this, do that, do that. And he's like, all right, so now you pray that you have our interest. And that's how God's been doing me all weekend. I was just talking to Tim about how me and God have just been kind of kicking it this week, you know? And I think that's what happens when we seek God. When we seek God, then uh, we get to experience the relationship that God wants to have with us. It's like when you seek your spouse, right? Or when you seek a job, you say you apply for how many? <laughs> yeah, so you're seeking employment, right? And so your, your, your plan or your job, your, your idea is that you have a relationship with those companies, right? Uh, they, they call you back. Right? And, and initiate that relationship. And then you'd have that interview, right? And then you get that job. And then going further, you would have that, uh, that relationship and those memories from uh, the, that job hunt and that job experience. Okay? So it's like that when we see God. Amen? And so uh, as I think about our text, I, I see three things in our text. And, that, and that's that we should seek Him early, but we should seek Him early in life. We should seek Him early in the morning, and we should seek him early in our situations, amen? And I think so many times we wait or not even consider God. We don't even think about God in our situations, amen? I'm old, I'm old now, but I wish that I had got saved earlier in life, amen? I wish I got saved earlier in life so that I would have avoided some of the mistakes I made, so that I could have avoided some of the issues that I deal with even now. If I had been saved earlier, you know, I might not have been trying to uh, get drunk, you know, when I was when I was younger. I might not have been trying to have sex when I was younger. I might not have been trying to sneak into the clubs when I was younger. I might not have had to lie to my mom about what I was doing or where I was at if I had been saved earlier. Amen. Some of us deal with issues now that we wouldn't have to deal with if we were saved uh, at a younger age. Amen. I might not have took that first drink. I might not have took that pill. I might not have uh, shot that first whatever, you know. I, I might not have experienced what I experienced because I was, I was saved. But because I wasn't saved at an early age, I, uh, I experienced some stuff that I might not have had to experience had I been saved. Amen? Amen. And so when we look at our text, uh, Samuel, 1 Samuel uh, 3 and 1, that text that we opened up with, it said, And the child, Samuel, ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open 
uh, vision. So uh, Samuel is, to believe, is believed to be 12 years old around that time. He's around 12 years old. And he's in the house of the Lord, and he's serving under Eli at 12 years old. Amen? So he's not thinking about having sex. He's not thinking about getting drunk. He's not lying to his parents about what he's doing and where he's at. But he's in the house of the Lord, and he's serving. If you remember when we went through the first, to the book of uh, First Samuel, when we went through the book of First Samuel on, on Wednesday nights, his mom Hannah was barren. Amen. She prayed for a child, and God blessed her with a child. She said, "If you bless me with a child, I'll, I'll give that child back to you. I'll donate that child, I'll dedicate that child to you." And, and so, when the child is about three years old, she's weaned them, weaned them off of uh, uh, being breastfed, and so she takes them to the tabernacle and turns them over to uh, Eli, the priest. Uh, Eli's about 88 years old, and um, Samuel's about three years old. And so Samuel just doesn't go to church with his parents. He just doesn't uh, occasionally get dropped off at church with his parents. He's not just at uh, vacation Bible school. Samuel lives in the tabernacle. Amen? He lives in the tabernacle. He grew up hmm? in church. Amen? And, but he just wasn't in church. Church, church was in him. Amen? And that's what happens when we meet God, when we meet Jesus at an earlier age. We have the opportunity, at least, to, 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 to live out that experience and to not just be in church, but to have the church be in us. Amen? If you look at Samuel, uh, 1 Samuel 3 and 19, you go down a few verses where we are. Uh, it says, Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan, the top of uh, Israel, to Beersheba, the bottom of Israel, uh, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And so many, so many adults don't even go to the house of the Lord, let alone serve in the house of the Lord. But Samuel lives in the tabernacle. Our text tells us that he slept, not, not just in one of the rooms in the tabernacle, but he slept in the sanctuary, amen? And as a parent, especially as a father, Ephesians 6 and 4 says this, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So we're commanded to bring them up. Uh, to bring them up in the way they should go. Elsewhere, Proverbs uh, 20, 20, 26 says this, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he won't depart from it. So it's our jobs as parents. I know we can't go back and get saved, amen? I can't go back to, to the sixth grade and get saved before I did some crazy stuff. I can't go back and get saved. But I can pour into my grandbaby, amen? I can pour into my kids, amen? I can not bring them up in the nurture and the fear and uh, admonition of the Lord, amen? That's my job as a, as, a, as, a, as a parent. That's my job as a grandparent, amen? Uh, we would say my job is to spoil my grandbaby, and it is. But it's also to, to, to walk out that faith thing, amen? To share my faith. With her. So, uh, one of the things we see in 1 Samuel 3 is that we should uh, seek God early in life. Amen. The other thing is that we should seek Him early in the morning. Uh, ben Franklin said, early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Amen. And that's in the natural. Uh, I was reading an article about the 10 benefits of waking up early in the morning. Amen. And I'll, I'll share a little bit of it for with you. First, the first benefit was uh, increased productivity. The second one was enhanced mental health, and I won't get into the verbiage underneath, un, under these. Uh, the third one was regular exercise. The fourth one was improved sleep quality. The fifth one was healthier diet choices. The sixth one was uh, increased focus and concentration. The seventh one was uh, better time management. Eight was improved physical fitness. Nine was boosted immune system. And ten was increased overall well-being. Uh, and that's in the natural, amen? Right, 1 Samuel 3 and 3 says this, And Ur, the lamp of the Lord, went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. So this is early in the morning. This was before the lamp of God went out. Uh, Exodus 27, 20 and 1 says that the lamp of uh, the Lord was supposed to stay open or up, was supposed to stay on from evening until morning until dawn. So this is before dawn. And uh, Samuel is up. Samuel is seeking the Lord early. David said in 63, 1, Psalm 63.1, uh, he said, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee. 
in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. David wrote this when he was in the wilderness. So he was either uh, running from Saul, who was trying to kill him, or he was hiding from his son Absalom when he was trying to overtake the kingdom. Amen? But either way, David understood that uh, if he didn't read the word, pray, worship, have devotional early in the morning, that he wasn't going to have time to do it later. Amen? And so he would do it early. He would carve out some time in the morning and he would have his devotion, he would pray, he would seek the Lord early, amen, in, in his day. You, you might not be running for your life, but no doubt, you're busy, amen. You're busy, you're tired, uh, most of us want to go to sleep right now, amen. Uh, so, so you don't have time in your day now to carve out some space for the Lord. So uh, if, if I wake up maybe 30 minutes earlier, amen, and went to bed on time, <laughs> then I might be able to get at least 30 minutes that morning, amen? If I wake up an hour early, I got, a, I got that 60 minutes that I can spend with the Lord, amen? But on the back end of that, I got to make sure I go to bed in time so I can do that, amen? Uh, Isaiah understood that concept. In Isaiah 26 and 9, he said this, With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. So Isaiah is saying, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do tomorrow morning. Amen. I want to get up early. I want to seek the Lord. I want to pray. I want to uh, do my devotions. I want to uh, meditate on the Word. I want to do all those things in the morning. So tonight I'm thinking about it. And so I'm prepping. I'm getting my uniform ready. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm pre-doing my lunch. Amen. I'm setting up everything I need to do for the next morning. So when I, when I wake up, I don't have to do those things. And I can devote that time to the Lord. Isaiah said, my, my soul... Uh, have I desired, in my soul have I desired thee in the night. So I'm thinking about God that night. Amen. So that I can wake up in the morning and think about it. So that I get that early start. That way all day long I can communicate, I can have a relationship and I can uh, be in the presence of the Lord all day long. As opposed to not doing that and then trying to squeeze him in at the back end. Amen. Or trying to squeeze him in during my busy, my busy day. Amen. I can't go back and get saved as a youth. But I can wake up earlier and, and seek him in the morning. Amen? Amen? And the last one is seeking him early in the situation. Proverbs 18, uh, Proverbs 8 and 17 says this, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Why is it that we don't think about God until we get in trouble? We don't really pray until we really need to pray. We don't really read our word until we really need to read our word. And we don't even consider God until it, get, it goes sideways or hits the fan, amen? I know when I was a deputy, and I would see people in the jail, and they'd be going hard for the Lord, amen? Those same people, they get booked out or whatever, and I'll see them in the lobby, and, and the last thing they do before they leave is they, they get their uh, property, and they unseal it, and they throw away the stuff that they don't want to take with them, amen? The stuff that they don't need or the stuff that they don't want. And that Bible is, uh, is sometimes the first thing to go. Amen? Those same people get picked back up on a BOP or another charge. And the first thing they ask you for when they get in the, in the pod is for a Bible. And so in the, in the pod, they, 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 they need the Lord. Amen? And they're going hard. I'm talking about prayer call. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about Bible study. Oh. I'm talking about uh, it, it just prostrate, right, for the Lord. All day long, going hard for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Get booked out. They, they right at their garbage can with their property. And the first thing to go is that Bible. VOP, other charge, come back in. And this is a cycle, right? We call it a jailhouse religion, right? We call it a jailhouse religion. But that's what I see as a deputy. Going hard. So I know when I'm in the park with you that all you're going to do is go hard for the Lord while you're in the park. And when you get out of here, you ain't going to need it no more. You're going to throw your Bible away. Who throws away a Bible? But that's what I've seen. We ain't throwing away Bibles, but to be honest, there are times when we need God more than we need Him, right? Sometimes we need God more, right? Sometimes it's going well and we don't need Him, right? Bills do, no problem. I got it right here, right? Uh, I got this other situation. I can take care of that. But when we get to a point where we can't navigate through it, we don't know how we're going to do it, then what do we do? We call God. We're parents, right? And we love hearing from our kids, but we don't want to hear from them just when they need stuff. <laughs> right? But that is exactly how we do God. Right? 
I'll get a text from uh, one of my kids early in the morning and say, good morning, right? Mm -hmm. With some exclamation points behind it. <laughs> and I already know that this individual, because they're busy, everybody's busy. So I already know that this individual has a need. I don't know what it is yet. I know he had, he got, they got a need. I, I won't put a gender on it, but I know they got a need. And so I hit them back up, yeah, hey, how you doing, good morning, whatever, whatever. And then a few seconds go by and I see the bubbles. You know how the bubbles come up on the, on the iPhone. I know they're texting. They're texting. And then, and then, then I read it. And then I say, I reply, Cash App or uh, Apple Pay, how you want it? <laughs> then I, I send some money. But that's how we do God. That is how we do God. As long as things are going well, and we're not hurt, we're not in no trouble, we're making stuff happen, then we don't need them. But what if, what if we, every morning we, we got up and we saw God? Right? We got our direction from God. What, what, what you want me to do today, God? All right, so I want you to do this, I want you to do that, I want you to say that. What you want me to read today? What you want me to finish on? What you want me to, uh, what, what meditation uh, verse you want me to meditate on today? So that when so-and-so comes to me and they say, hey, I need a word, I, I know what to share with them. Amen? When somebody else comes to me and they say, hey, man, could you pray for my mom? I know how to, I've been fellowshipping with the Lord. It's easy for me to transition from uh, data entry at work or ordering some uniforms at work to be able to turn and say to that person, let, 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 me, let me pray for you. Let me, let me share my faith with you. Amen? Let's seek God together. Let's go to the, the what, let's see what God got to say about that thing. But if I ain't been spending all the time with the Lord, then I don't have that option. Right? Well, let me give you my opinion, which is what you don't want. You don't want that. You don't want my opinion. Look, Nara don't even want my opinion. She's laughing. You don't want my opinion. You don't want to know what the Lord has to say about that thing. I'm going to close with this. Amen? Matthew 11 and 28, and this is a familiar verse. Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And, I, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's a promise from God, right? So I can go to God and I can say, hey, I got this issue. Or I got this perceived issue. Or I'm about to start on this endeavor. Because I'm seeking him at the, at the beginning of the situation. And I'm not waiting to the end of the situation. Or the middle of the situation. Asking them to come in. If there's a, if there's a situation... Uh, and my kids are in it, and it's at the, st at, at the beginning stages, and they call me and they ask my advice. Then they call me again in the middle of it, and they ask my advice. I'm more likely to want to help them. I'm, I'm probably going to help them anyway. But I'm more likely to want to help them if they have considered me at the beginning. And especially if they took my advice. What do you think, Dad? Should I? Yeah, yeah, you should. And then they get over here, and they did what I told them to do, and they're in trouble. How much more likely am I to help them? As opposed to them calling me here and I'm saying, oh, I didn't even know you were buying a car. I didn't even know the house was up for more. I didn't even know the house was in foreclosure. Why you, why you call me up and now? I'm, I'm, I'm like, Dad, man, why? We talk every day. Why you say? But that's how we do God. I'm not going to consider you over here, God, because I got the down payment. I got the good credit. I can go buy a house right now and it wouldn't be an issue, so I don't have to pray about it. But if I had to pray about it, if my credit was messed up, then I would, I would be talking to God over here, wouldn't I? But because I'm good, I don't have to. We got to seek God early. We got to seek Him early in life if that's possible. Because that helps us avoid so many other... There's so many people locked up now because they didn't seek Him early. There's so many people on crack or on some other type of substance now because they didn't seek Him early in life. Amen? So if I didn't do that... I can at least seek him early in the morning. I can do that. Amen. Every day that God wakes me up is a gift. We call it the present, right? That's the present. Okay. Amen. And so when I wake up with my present, my, my, my life, my health, my strength, the least I can do is roll over and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The least I can do is say, uh, uh, give him a little credit for waking me up. Give him a little credit for uh, keeping me through the night. The least I can do is seek him. That's the only way my relationship's going to grow. That's the only way I'm going to grow spiritually. Because I can't grow spiritually without the Lord. And I can't have a relationship with somebody that I don't talk to. How is my relationship with God going to grow if I don't talk to him? Anybody in a, in a, in a romantic relationship? Don't talk to that person for three months and see how, see, see how your relationship grows. 
They won't. You'll call them three months later and they'll be like, who is this? If, if the phone number still works. Amen? I spent a lot of time away from my wife. But we always talked. I always made a way. I was in Africa and I was on this little black jack thing. Hooked up to my computer. Talking to my wife every morning. It was night for them, but it was morning for me. And every morning I would talk to them before I went to work. Because at work I can't call them. So I'm trying to catch them before they leave the house, because what? I want that relationship to grow. I don't want my time in Africa uh, to, to hurt my relationship with my wife. I don't want my time on earth to hurt my relationship with the Lord. He says, come to me. All of you that labor. And we all labor. <clears throat> it's, it's a rough world out there. We all tired. I'm, I'm looking at your faces now. You, you, you want to lay down right now? <laughs> if I had a pillow in the comfort, you'd stretch right out. I promise you, if you brought me one up here, I'll lay down. I'm good at time. I spent all day with Nara yesterday. <laughs> it's funny when you show up as a grandparent, how the kids are going to go, they're going to go on the back, back porch and they're going to do whatever they're doing, leaving you in there to be tortured or, or have fun with, with, your, with your grandkids. The grandkids, they got too much energy. I'm going out. I got 13 things going on, and, and I'm thinking about all kinds of stuff. And I'm trying to study for the day. But Nara wants to play dinosaur. <laughs> So what do I do? I play dinosaur. <laughs> My point is, we all got stuff. But we can give all that stuff to the Lord. We don't have to deal with it. But in order to do that, we got to seek Him. We got to seek Him early. Amen. If you got kids, pour it, pour it to them. Bring them up in the admonition of the Lord. Amen. If you're in the admonition of the Lord, train them up in the way they should go. That's our job. They got the option then to seek Him at a, at, in the youth. And they can avoid so many things that we had to deal with because we didn't seek him in our youth. Tim, you got saved at what time? When did you get saved? How old were you? 16. 16. Man, I wish I would have got saved back then. <laughs> you, I'm 16? I'm trying to sneak in there. What was that club? I'm trying to, I'm trying to get some fake ID. <laughs> I'm going out drinking beer at 16. And you saved. I wish I would have been saved at 16. I wish I would have been saved at 14. I wish I would have been saved out of the womb. I wish I would have been saved my whole life. Think about where our relationship would be right now with the Lord. Spending all that time running from the Lord. I should have got saved when I was younger. But I can seek Him in the mornings. And I can seek Him early in my situations. Amen? And that's all this is about. So if you leave with nothing else, tonight you should be like Isaiah. Thinking about the Lord. Desiring the Lord. Thinking about, oh, let me get all my stuff situated now so that tomorrow morning I can wake up early and I can seek the Lord. Amen. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap of praise.